everybody and welcome to another Florida friendly um, landscaping educational program. Today is one of our Friday lunch and learns and we are going to talk today about fragrantly Florida friendly all those beautiful Florida plants that um, bring wonderful aromas to our yard. This was actually a suggestion. We asked for suggestions um, from our listeners uh, from the people who attend the classes. And this was one of the suggestions. So I took it because it was a challenge. To me, it was something I hadn't ever done before and I thought it would be fun. So I've worked, um, you know, I've started this one from scratch. So I did a lot of research. So I hope, you know, you can learn from it. I am, if I can get the slide there, there we go. I am Lily Browning. I do work for Hernando County Utilities under water conservation in the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. You can reach me at either of these two emails if you would like a PDF copy of this program. Um, now it is being recorded, so it'll be available on Facebook this afternoon, as well as on YouTube. Um, depending on how busy my YouTube man is, you know, maybe today, possibly, um, you know, by next week sometime. But go ahead and go on to Hernando County Government YouTube, and you'll see the over 100 classes um, that I have recorded on there. So something on, on there should be of interest to you. But if you would like a PDF of this, if you want it like in writing of the presentation, email me at lilyb, L-I-L-L-Y-B, at hernandocounty.us. Or you can also use our new email, hernandocountyffl, at hernandocounty.us. These are the nine principles of Florida-friendly landscaping. Everything I teach harkens back to one or more of these principles, including uh, fragrant flowers. And we're going to discuss in it right plant, right place, as well as it's just naturally going to fall into number five, attracting wildlife. So when we are talking about right plant, right place, that very first principle of Florida friendly landscaping, um, we need to think about that. We don't want to get so caught up in our own desires as to bringing different aromat aromatic, uh, you know, benefits, you know, to our yard that we forget the plant has very specific needs of where it needs to grow. So, of course, what we're going to be talking about, since this is Florida friendly, you know, you want to choose Florida friendly and or native plants. And I will give you in this class um, ideas on those kind of plants, but it's certainly not all exhaustive. You're going to have to choose for your planting zone, and I'm going to cover that in the next slide or two. You have to consider the plant's light conditions, soil conditions. You know, just because you want something that smells really sweet in a certain area, it's got to meet the plant's conditions. Mature size is something people tend to overlook but become very important later down the line. And of course, that plant's watering needs. So we got to keep, you know, right plant, right place has to be foremost in our mind if we want a successful plant to grow. As I was putting this together, it occurred to me just the other day, you know, why, why are flowers fragrant? Why, why do they have that capacity? Well, not all flowers, but why are some flowers very fragrant, very fragrant? Well, the fragrances are created by a variety of volatile organic compounds within the plant itself. And I hate to break this to all of us, those pretty plants are not smelling beautiful for us. <laughs> we enjoy it, we benefit from it, but if we didn't exist, those plants would still smell wonderful. Why, what's that purpose? Of course, to attract their pollinators, to attract the insects, the birds, the bats, all of those pollinators. So that got me thinking, well, how does a bee smell? You know, or how does a beetle smell or a butterfly? 
Well, they do have smell type receptors. They don't have a nose, you know, like we do with an airway system, but they have smell receptors on some um, butterflies on their antennae and feet. Bees have them on their antenna. Some butterflies actually have some on their scales. So the pollinator and the aromatic plant have evolved together so that the pollinator knows where to find the plant and gets its sustenance. And then the plant gets the pollen spread around. And, you know, it's a win-win relationship for both of them. So therefore, the type of plant and the type of pollinator are going to sync up. So if it's butterflies or bees that the plant needs, that's going to be most fragrant during the day. If it's, uh, if it's pollinated by moths or other nighttime, you know, critters out there, it's going to be most fragrant, most easy to be found during the evening. So once we have figured out right plant, right place, you know, the best uh, conditions and places for the plants, then we need to think about, because we might be so excited about bringing all these wonderful aromas to our uh, landscape, but okay, let's sit down and talk about and think about that too, could tend to be overwhelming. So add the fragrant flowers in judiciously, where you're going to enjoy them, where they will complement each other. I'm giving you these plants in no particular smell order. <laughs> I'm giving them to you in order of like from trees all the way down to ground covers and annuals from big to little order. Um, and I split them up in native and non-native. I did not split them up in aromatic order, which might complement each other or what you're looking for in that area. And because that is you know, aromas, smells are very subjective. Some of us may absolutely become intoxicated and love the smell of jasmine, gardenia, citrus, that kind of thing. My sister tells me those strong aromas feel like an ice pick in her head. <laughs> so, you know, if somebody is affected adversely that you're close to in your family who will be around a lot, you might want to judiciously choose where you put those plants so it's not going to um, be a big unwelcome mat you know, for that person. Um, and one way you can do that and see how they're going to work out combined with the other aromas in your yard is don't just plant them immediately. Leave them in pots for a little bit. Test them out. Test drive them, if you will, in areas and see how you know it works out there for a little bit. And it, you know, Anytime we are wanting to attract wildlife, we suggest getting a diversity, a large diversity of plants that will be blooming each season. Something is going to be blooming each season and also with aromatic plants, the times of day, as, as I mentioned. Now, they break the scents, the, the uh, plant scents, down into these four basic groups. So those plants that I could find that actually someone talked about what it smelled like to them, um, I put that information in there to, you know, kind of help you out with that. But we have four basic types that you're going to be your floral, obviously, which is sweet and heady. It promotes relaxation. That would be your jasmine or your gardenia, unless, of course, you're one of those people who it affects, um, you know, the way you feel and not in a good way. Um, there's, there's those that have a fresh scent, fresh or zesty, mint, uh, citrus, you know, uh, citrus itself, not, not the flowers, the actual citrus. And, you know, that has its smell. Then we have spicy, deep, musky, more like your herbs, you know, sage, basil, anise, that kind of smell. And then um, the woodsy or earthy, which is pretty much all around us. And that they say promotes mental acuity. So if you're having a hard time concentrating or just need to decompress a bit, go out in the woods, feel that, you know, that woodsy smell. 
And those kind of smells can be like rosemary, cedar, pine. So those are the basic four smells, you know, categories that they put a lot of these plants in. Before we start talking about the plants themselves, in each plant, I tell you it's planting zone. Uh, it's horticultural planting zone. Things have changed in this USDA horticultural planting zone just recently. So if you've listened to some other classes or you go to the YouTube channel and listen to me further down, I'm going to tell you Hernando County's solidly in zone 9A. But it's changed. The USDA has changed this. So here is Hernando County. Here we are. And if you can see, Part of it's still in 9A, but a whole big chunk here is now considered 9B, just because the temperatures are rising just a little bit, just a little bit. So 9B, you know, there's not a huge difference um, between 9A and 9B, but it could be the difference of a few degrees and, you know, a few extra plants that you might be able to choose from. So it looks like all of the East Hernando County, Ridge Manor, if you're listening from there, you're 9B. Masaryk Town, if you're listening from that area, um, uh, Trillium, those kind of places, looks like you're 9B. And this little corner over here, uh, Arapica, looks like you're 9B. So what that tells you is you have a little bit more room to experiment. If I were to experiment, I'm gonna have less luck experimenting with a plant zoned only for eight to nine than I am experimenting with a 9B, you know, in a 9A. And some of them I'm gonna show you are even down into the tens, but those are definitely gonna be potted plants that you're gonna to have to bring in from the cold. What I wanna make clear is this is not an edible plants class. I don't know nothing about edible plants. So, and that is an area where somebody has to be a, a big expert in that to take the liability of telling you, go ahead and eat this. I'm not referring to the herbs or tomatoes or things like that, but some of these plants probably are edible, but that's not what we're going to discuss today. And I do not have the qualifications to discuss that. Let's get started with the oohs and the ahs and the beautiful, pretty plants here. So, banana shrub. We're going to start with fragrant native trees. This banana shrub right here, and I've labeled the plants so that if um, you decide you want a PDF of this, these may not necessarily be in order. <laughs> you know, so I put the the label on the plant to help you if you want to look at it later. Banana shrubs are zoned <coughs> for uh, zones eight through 10. Some of these are zoned a little higher up, lesser number, but higher up. But I just stopped at eight because that's Florida's zones. We don't need really to concern ourselves in this program with Georgia zones or North Carolina zones, even though some of these may be able to grow there. But the banana shrub is good for zones eight through 10. You have a zone like that, then you are pretty solid, you know, that it's going to do well in our, in Hernando County, that is 9A and 9B. They, um, it has light yellow spring to early summer flowers. And they say the flowers, when they're blooming, they smell like uh, banana. Obviously, it's called a banana shrub or even cantaloupes. So they don't grow bananas. They just have that banana type aroma. Chickasaw plum, one of my favorites. And I took this picture in the woods last weekend. This Chickasaw plum, it might be a flatwoods plum. There are people out there who say, <coughs> I'm sorry, all these plants I love are trying to kill me if you can, if you can tell. Um, all these plants, oh, or I'm sorry, the Chickasaw plum, the flatwoods plum, there are those who do separate them out as two distinct um, plants. There are those who say there's not really a difference. So what I could have, what I 
was able to ascertain, I know these are blooming right now. I took their picture. Um, the Chickasaw plum for zones eight and nine has winter flowers and it creates more thickets. The plat flatwood plum might wait a little bit more towards spring, which as we know in Florida, winter and spring are like really hard to tell which is which. <laughs> um, so they have maybe a little bit of later flowers and might not create the thickets as much. Beautiful flower. Now it's a plum, so it's in the prunus family. So we're going to assume, you know, it smells like plums. Smell, they literally do make plums that usually the wildlife is going to get before you do. So, you know, kind of that sweet plum cherry kind of smell. All the different pine species just taking, you know, a walk in the woods and smelling the pine needles as well as the pine bark has that. And as they say, that helps promote mental acuity. So if you can't think straight, take a walk through, through some pine woods. Sassafras, now that's one that we don't hear about a lot and it's a native um, zones 8a through 9a. So maybe in that 9b, you might, it might be a little too warm for you. Um, it has spring flowers and different parts of the sassafras tree smells differently. The bark is going to smell like cinnamon. The roots, big surprise, they're going to smell like root beer. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? I guess they, at least they used to make real root beer out of the sassafras uh, roots. And the leaves and the stems are going to smell like sweet lemon. So that is a really neat combination um, plant you have there. Where can you find these? You're going to have to do, you know, the research for those. Um, you know, go to uh, Florida Native Plant Society and also the Florida Association of Native Nurseries, F-A-N-N. -N. Google that and they will, um, you'll get to see all the native plant nurseries near you. Look up their websites, give them a call, see if they happen to have some of these wonderful native plants. They are likely to have Chickasaw plum, most likely. Um, you know, you can call around and see if you can find some of the others. More um, native plants, fragrant native plants include our southern red cedar. You know, as it ages, we all love the smell of cedar wood. That's going to be a nice, a nice smell there. <laughs> southern magnolia, when it's blooming um, in the in the summer. Of course, it's blooming 40 feet up in the air. <laughs> so you the sweet bay magnolia, which is for our zones eight and nine. Um, is a little bit less tall, so you might have some of those flowers more available to you. A lot of people, if they are able to, you know, get some of those flowers, they like to float them in a bowl, bowl of water. It's a nice, very nice, sweet smell. Um, the sweet acacia, it's, um, it's for zones 9 through 11, so it would work for us. It has yellow year-round flowers, but it's very thorny. So it's not something you want near the house, unless you have a teenage daughter or something, but I mean, um, something where somebody could get hurt, but it's a great, um, obviously with the words sweet acacia, it's going to produce a very nice sweet smell and be a great um, attractor of pollinators. Then this um, wild olive, or devil wood, they call it. I'm not sure why it's called that. Maybe the wood is spiky or something as well, but it is going to, um, olives in general, um, couldn't find much about the native and what it might smell like, but the non-native, they talked about it smelling like um, kind of apricot -y. So maybe it's it could be along the same lines. Now let's talk about some Florida friendly but that aren't native uh, plants here. I'm trying to shrink some things so I can see uh, <laughs> so I can see the the slide a little better. This chaste tree. I've heard a lot of good things about this chaste tree, but I haven't 
yet I've yet to come across one, um, does well in zones eight through 11. Blooms in late spring and summer. Um, it will have lavender colored flowers, not lavender smelling flowers, but lavender colored flowers. And the reason, maybe I haven't seen much about it, 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 it tends to get weedy, they say. Not necessarily invasive, but it can be a little uh, aggressive and weedy. So it depends on what you're looking for. So I did not find it in the Florida Friendly Landscaping Plant Selection Guide. Doesn't mean it's not Florida friendly, but maybe something you wanna think about if you, you know, want a neat and tidy area. Um, and they say it smells not quite sweet. They do say it's a very intoxicating type smell, but it is more sage-like. Now citrus, citrus, you know, defined Florida for over a hundred years. And then various catastrophes, including freezes and diseases, have really put a hurting on our citrus industry. It's not dead, but it's it's suffering. But the university researchers are out there. You know, their whole job is when a plant succumbs to forces that can't be overcome, then they need to research and, you know, create plants that can overcome at least this, this particular adversity. So they're working on that. There's several different varieties of citrus coming out there. This sugar bell mandarin is one of them that is resistant to citrus greening. Um, mandarins, tangerines aren't as, uh, you know, cold susceptible as some of the oranges. They also say they are working on new grapefruit and tangerine varieties. If you wanna find out more about that, there's a link here at the Northwest District um, Citrus, Citrus, uh, it's, uh, I've lost the word, but you know, where they plan and uh, create different citrus and research. So um, there's a link for that. I can email that to you or send you this whole PDF. So you can bring, they're starting, they're getting, they seem to be very optimistic that Floridians will be able to have citrus in their backyard again as a common thing. So, you know, that'll be wonderful. Jacaranda over here, we are a little bit north. We always said, you know, it's, it's you're really pushing it, but the zones are 9B. And now remember, a good part of Hernando County says it's 9B, so I wouldn't spend a ton of money on a jacaranda, but it might be worth experimenting because it just might work out for you. And it has slightly sweet flowers. And also the leaves under the tree smell musky. So you have this combination of honey and earthiness. <laughs> that is what they say. Of course, this plumeria, which has many names. They make the lay flowers out of it in uh, Hawaii. Plumeria, frangipani, that's a fun name. And nosegay, you know, that obviously something that is sounds like it makes your, na your nose happy. Um, has some very nice aromas to it. Okay, it's zones 10B and 11. So I wouldn't try and plant it in your yard here in Hernando County going to freeze. I promise you it's going to freeze. But the cool thing about it is they do pretty well in pots. And I know people who pot them up and in big pots and then push them in a greenhouse. They can turn to just the stem, just the trunk, all winter long and come back just fine. I Somebody gave me some pieces. They're very easily propagated to so some pieces of the trunk. And they said, just put those pieces in your garage in the dark all winter, plant them in the spring. Well, it was about July or August before I remembered and I found them and like, oh, I put them in a pot and they started leafing out. So, you know, they're pretty, pretty easy to propagate. Um, 
has spring through fall flowers. <laughs> Obviously, it does need cold protection. And what it smells like, it smells exotic, like with jasmine or tuberose, like, and they say hints of apricot, peach, and hints of lemon. That's a lot of aroma going on there. More uh, non-native uh, Florida friendly saucer magnolia. That's going to be a more of a smaller magnolia to bring down to your level as these beautiful pink, white, and lavender flowers for zones eight and nine. Over here, we have a white Geiger. It's also called a Texas olive. So that's, you know, one of the olives that um, they say smells like peaches, orange blossoms, or jasmine. So that's going to be a very strong, sweet uh, smell for you. And this windmill palm, I actually found a palm. Now, a lot of places that I researched, you know, didn't say anything about the flowers of this windmill palm having a particular aroma. But there is one of the resources I used, which you'll see at the end, it's called the Book of Lists. And they do list it under palms that smell fragrant. And this is the one for our zones, eight and through 11. As I said, I only put Florida zones. So I think it's actually more like six or something through 11. You can see the pictures from North, Car North Carolina State. So it grows pretty far north. I think I read it can withstand up to 10 degrees. But a lot of people, when they have these palms, they don't let it go to flower. They think that's not part of the you know, aesthetic for palms. But if you do let this, apparently it has a nice fragrance, but it's not going to do it unless you have a boy and a girl wind palm around to make that happen. Okay, let's talk about fragrant native shrubs here in Florida. Down here we have the button bush. You can see why it's called that. I mean, it's not a corona. <laughs> it's, it does look more like a button, but you know, it was named and looked like that before they showed us what a coronavirus looks like. It's a great, um, it's a great native that grows. I find it a lot in the Chazowitzka Wildlife Management Area zones um, in eight and nine. It needs a very wet place. Where I find it is in the swampy areas of that wildlife management area. Um, but it has these white um, spring and summer flowers, interesting looking flowers, and a very nice sweet smell. This fetter bush I found uh, more inland. And actually, I took the picture, and for years, I thought I had taken a picture of a native blueberry. I thought it was in the vaccinium family. Then I did this program, and I learned, oh, that's a picture of a fetter bush or a shiny lionia. Um, I believe that the extension office on their Arbor Day actually um, got a hold of some Lionia and gave those out for Florida Arbor Day. Um, they're in zone, it's for zones eight and nine. Um, it says creamy white spring flowers. Obviously these ones, they're, they're pink and I've found many other images of pink ones and it has a honey-like smell to it. Another native shrub here is this Florida anise or star anise. Really cool. Uh, photo here, or really cool flower of it. It, it does well in zones eight through 10. Um, maroon type flowers, I think they're actually darker red than this photograph is you know, showing through. Um, it has spring through late summer and you know it's anise. So some people are not in favor of having that smell in their yard, but it's going to smell, um, especially the leaves, going to smell like licorice when it's crushed. So it might be a nice good complement to some of the other things that you have going on. Other fragrant native shrubs are this, you don't see this very often, but you will find it in native plant um, circles. That's marlberry. I couldn't, I had a hard time getting 
the internet to stop showing me things on mulberries when I wanted moral berries, M-A-R-L, for zones nine through 11 as these white year-round flowers. I couldn't find much about um, you know, how it smells. And so I'm gonna assume it smells sweet. Otherwise they would just tell you if it smelled like something else. Another um, great native shrub that can grow very uh, large and be great screening for you and a great uh, attractant of uh, wildlife is a Simpson stopper. It does say 9B through 11, but um, I know the extension office, at least they used to, you know, had a whole hedgerow of them, but they're right on that line right there near the Hernando County Fairgrounds kind of where they decided that might be a 10B kind of area. And they have these white year round flowers. Other fragrant native shrubs, sweet shrub or Carolina allspice. That's the one here in the middle for zones eight through 10A. So it's gonna fit well in our area. It has spring to summer flowers and they say it has a strawberry like fragrance. The sweet pepper bush is here on the left. So, you know, it's kind of an oxymoron, sweet pepper bush. And it's because um, maybe the flowers smell sweet and the leaves smell a bit peppery. So that's, you know, where they get sweet pepper bush. Then you have a white fringe tree. It, it's for zones eight and nine. It says the showy white spring flowers, and it has a sweet lilac -y kind of smell. That would be very exciting for those, you know, who miss the lilacs up north. And some non-native uh, fragrant bushes, Cliera. I'm not all that familiar with that, but it's for zones eight and nine. It has the white spring flowers and it has smells a combination of sweet and musky. Crepe jasmine, they call it pinwheel flower. I don't see this a lot in Hernando County, but the second I, you know, go a little bit south into Pasco and beyond, it seems to be very common down there. Uh, this pinwheel flower uh, or crepe jasmine. So it's for zones 9B through 11, has these really cool looking pinwheel flowers and it is fragrant at night. Here's our old standard, the gardenia, zones eight through 10, and it has the white spring and summer flowers, and of course, an amazingly beautiful smell, unless you're sensitive to it and, and don't like it. And this natal plum, um, zones nine through 11, we don't see it too much up here, but they say it fits in our zones and it has these white year round flowers. You're gonna find that a lot of the, a lot of the plants that have the most aroma at night are white. <laughs> and if you, you know, that stands to reason, it's got to attract its own pollinators. So it's got to put out its nice smellies, you know, in the night, but also it has to stand out from the darkness. So, that's why a lot of those plants happen to be white. Here's some fragrant non-native Florida friendly shrubs. Golden dewdrop is right here on the right. I showed a picture of the flower. Its berries are golden colored. Um, <coughs> for zones 9B through 11, I had one in the city of Brooksville that you know did just fine. It would freeze, but always come back. The flowers are lavender colored, not lavender smell. Well, no, they do say it smells like lavender. It smells like vanilla and lavender. Laura Pedlum, that's, here I am down here. This is at our office, trying to decide if this has an aroma because I have never really noticed a particular aroma about Laura Pedlum, but they do include it in the, um, you know, this when I say slightly sweet, you see I had some of those petals up my nose. I was already suffering from allergies, so you know what the heck. Um, 
I'm trying to ascertain some kind of nice aroma for it, but I will tell you sometimes when I do walk by there, I am surprised by a little bit of a sweet smell. So it is possible you know, that that is what is producing that aroma. This pittosporum used to be very common, um, commonly used. It's gonna have a citrusy smell. They, it's what they call it a mock orange. Um, for some reason, it just you know, wasn't as popular anymore. Maybe it'll make a comeback in Florida landscapes. Then we have the sweet almond bush. Oh, and hence its name, it smells like sugared almonds with white summer to fall flowers. Some more of those would be that uh, a tea olive. I hear that tea olives smell absolutely fantastic. And they smell like peaches, orange blossoms, or jasmine is what it's been described as. Now this yesterday, today, and tomorrow plant, um, I haven't noticed it having a particular aroma, but again, you know, different plants might produce their aromas at, at different times of the year, different times of the day. They say it smells like honey scented lavender. The other cool thing about yesterday, today, and tomorrow, this is a full um, shrub and this is a close up. So you can see what happens is it flowers, it flowers all the time, it flowers all over. When a flower is new on day one, it is purple. Day two, it'll fade to pink. By day three, it'll be white. And then it'll fall off. But that's happening all over. So you have different stages for different flowers. That's why they call it yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so you have pink, purple, and white uh, variegated looking you know, shrub but it's just the flowers bloom on different days for, with different colors. Some vines, let's get into some of the vines. Some fragrant native vines would be Carolina jessamine. Some people go ahead and call that jasmine. But I like to say it how it's spelled, <laughs> jessamine. This also is blooming right now all over the Chazowitzko Wildlife Management Area has the yellow, yellow tubular winter through spring flowers. Climbing aster is more of a fall and winter um, vine and it can become very aggressive, um, but a great native vine. And a colleague of mine, uh, Frank Gado, Gal, Galdo, who is now with Fernando County, I'm sorry, Pasco County Utilities, he always says to him, these smell like sugar cookies. So, and they, and they bloom around the holidays. So, you know, it, it's to him, it's a holiday plant. So it has a nice sweet smell. Some non-native, um, but Florida friendly vines. We have our star or Confederate jasmine. As you know, it's gonna smell very strong like jasmine. Showy spring flowers. This moon flower. Um, it you know blooms at night, um, or or late afternoon I would say into night, um, in the late summer through winter, and it smells sweet. Be very careful with your wisterias. Yeah, you know, the Japanese wisteria is an invasive plant, so make sure you get the American or the evergreen wisteria, and they that should be summer <laughs> through fall flowers, um. It smells like cedar or camphor. So you were expecting wisteria and all the romance novels and novels and stuff that it smelled heady and sweet, but they say no, it smells more like cedar or camphor. Now this vanilla orchid, you see it says zones 10 through 11A, but they are finding ways to grow these in pots and in greenhouses and you can actually then produce vanilla, vanilla beans, get your own vanilla extract from it. And Dr. Bill Lester has a video on YouTube on just that, on um, how to grow vanilla orchids. And um, don't try and memorize that whole link. All you have to do is go to YouTube, look for Hernando County Government, and then look under Hernando Extensions Playlist, 
and you'll see growing vanilla orchids, how sweet it is, I believe is the name of that particular class. Let's talk about some native perennials. They say dotted horsemint, also called spotted bee balm, smells like thyme and oregano. Different sages and salvias, I'm just showing you the scarlet salvia is a native one, but there are so many different sages, salvias that have that wonderful, um, you know, wonderful kind of spicy smell to it. This one is a fun, fun native called forked blue curls. I don't think we hear enough of, enough about this one. And they, they are in the mint family. You see that square stem means they're probably in the mint family. So they have a minty and a lemony scent. Everything that has a lemony scent, when I was writing this out, I continuously wrote lemonly instead of lemony. And I decided I like that word better anyway. So it's a lemonly scent. <laughs> That's a new word, but I like it better. And then your crinum lilies, these spider lilies are the, you know, some of the native versions of it. They also call it a swamp lily. They say, this is interesting, smells like vanilla, fruit loops, perfume, or bleach. I don't know where the bleach person <laughs> came from that added that particular um, idea in. And it just goes to show that you know people perceive things differently. Some non-native Florida-friendly perennials. This African blue basil, I know the Hernando County Master Gardeners was selling it a few years ago, and I happened to get some. And every time I went by there, oh my gosh, I would be I would like just want to roll around in it. It smells so wonderful. They say it smells like camper. Definitely smells uh, you know, spicy and kind of exotic. I, I particularly enjoy it. And ginger lily, uh, for zones eight through 10, grows in various, comes in various colors, not just this salmon color here. They say smells like tuberose, gardenia, freesia, and rose with undertones of citrus and fresh greens. This now sounds like we're describing, you know, a fancy recipe at a restaurant. Here's some more fragrant non-native Florida friendly perennials. Society garlic over here. Um, that's the flower for it. It grows kind of like a, a bunch for an edging grass. It's going to smell like garlic, yes. <laughs> so, um, but maybe a sweeter kind of garlic is why they call it society garlic. These are both pine cone gingers. Sometimes they call those shampoo. Gingers, sometimes they shoot out these little flowers. Sometimes they're orange, sometimes white like this. Not all of them do, but if you squeeze them, all this liquid is gonna come out of it. Um, when we moved to Florida, I was 11, and these were all, all in the yard. And I, you know, being a curious child, <laughs> Figured out very shortly, if I squeeze these things, all this stuff came out. So I called them perfume balls to uh, later learn that I guess people um, did add some of it into their shampoo. Um, don't do that because if you have an allergic reaction, I'm not <laughs> going to be held responsible. But it definitely holds a lot of uh, juicy fragrance inside of the pine cone ginger. Then you have uh, the spiral ginger. Um, different color flowers. Some are going to be white, some are red and yellow like this with a very nice, probably gingery kind of smell. And of course, all orchids, you know, you can pick up orchids anywhere and there's so many different varieties and, you know, all I, most orchids anyway are going to smell wonderfully sweet. Now let's do a couple grasses. Wild Penny Royal. Um, it is lavender colored. It grows in zones 8B through 10B. It's almost endemic to Florida. What does endemic mean? It means it only grows here in Florida. There's a tiny bit that's edged its way up into Georgia. 
So it has purple, pinkish flowers in late winter and spring. And they say that smells minty and or lemon -ly. <laughs> And speaking of which, we have lemongrass, which is going to smell lemon -ly. Um, They say it's for zones 10 through 11. I have a bunch in my yard right now. It didn't bother to freeze when we had some of the other freezes that killed, uh, not killed, uh, took back um, a lot of my other plants. The lemongrass is, is fine, so. And it, you can pick it up fairly cheaply, so you know you won't have a huge expense if you do happen to lose it in a freeze. Here are some of the annuals, fragrant annuals, paper white narcissus. Geraniums are very, you've got to hit a very exact window to grow them in Florida. And I mean spring or fall. They don't like it hot and they don't like it cold. <laughs> so you've got to find that exact window when you can, you know, don't expect a long relationship with your geranium. But it's going, the leaves smell like aromatic oils, mint, rose, lemon, cinnamon, or chocolate depending on the variety of um, geranium and who's smelling it. This Dianthus, Sweet William, they say it has a spicy vanilla smell. I've never noticed the Dianthus having a smell, but maybe next time I see some, I will again stick my nose on them to see if they do. And then of course, um, we can grow nasturtium. What you will want to do is um, go or Google, Florida annuals, and then Google UF for University of Florida after that. So you can get publications to find out when we grow these certain annuals. It's not necessarily going to be the same time that you did it up north. Sweet peas, um, pot marigolds, as well as sweet alyssum that come in purple, white, pink flowers, all going to bring some at least temporary, you know, annual fragrance to your yard. Of course, herbs, you know, herbs are always going to bring wonderful flavors to your yard. I've written these herbs out. These are the kinds, you know, that can be grown in Florida. I don't have the time of year. There'll be a, a, a publication on one of these slides that talks about herbs for Florida. Don't try to match these herbs up with the photo I have beside it. For the, for these herbs, I just took pictures of herbs and then put the ones that can grow here in Florida, which is quite a bit, you know, um, in alphabetical order here. And here are a few more of them also, you know, your fennel, your garlic, your ginger, lemon balm, all down the line here. And, you know, all the way, mints, oregano, parsley, rosemary, Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Okay, yes, <laughs> tarragon, savory. And here is the publication, Herbs and Spices in the Florida Garden. This is the link, but you, you know, if you don't want to write all that down, Herbs and Spices in the Florida Garden, UF. That'll work on Google. And also, of course, all the sages, savory, tarragon, thyme, and I asked Dr. Lester, you know, in, in the vegetable world, is there anything other than tomatoes that really has a nice distinct smell as it's growing? And he said, no. <laughs> so to me, he seemed to even question about tomatoes, but to me, tomatoes, and I think this is where Floridian transplants run into trouble because tomatoes smell like your summer childhood if you happen to have spent the summer up north, I mean, your childhood up north. And tomatoes are done, done, done by June here. So it's kind of a psychological break we have to make, to know when to grow the tomatoes. But, you know, it brings back those wonderful memories for us. If you happen to have a uh, water garden, the native uh, fragrant water lily is, you know, definitely something you would want to add as a native um, water plant that is going to bring lovely fragrance to your water garden. Okay, I know this is, if we're talking about 
fragrances, you want to know why haven't I brought up roses? So I will go ahead and bring up <laughs> roses. Um, there's a publication, Growing Roses in Florida. Google Growing Roses in Florida, UF. What I'm going to say about roses is roses are hard in Florida. If you're a rosarian and you love roses and you want to spend a lot of time, if that's how you decompress, if that's what you enjoy doing, you know, go for it. It can be done, but it does take a lot of time and it takes a lot of inputs, especially through our summers you're going to be spraying fungicides on those roses. Um, you know, there's, obviously they take some water too. They are pretty high maintenance, a lot of the roses. So if that is what you want to do to prove it can be done, yes, it can be done with a lot of time and effort and inputs. But there are other roses out there that are less high maintenance. So you might want to try some uh, climbing or rambling roses. Those are, you know, you won't have to spend all your time spraying those. Also your antique ones. Antique, the definition of an antique rose is it was um, hybridized before 1867. They do better here. So your old blush, metabolis, Louis Philippe. Also, we call that a Florida cracker rose, which is what the picture is on the top there. Or Mrs. B.R. Cant. Those are your antique roses that might do pretty well here. Or, you know, some of those rambling. Um, I have some white climbers. I don't pay any attention to them at all, and they do, you know, pretty well. Uh, your knockout roses, I didn't mention them. They're not going to have uh, fragrance. That's why they didn't make it, you know, to this to this uh, particular program. Uh, there, we do have some native roses down here again in the Chazowitzka Wildlife um, Wildlife Management Area. I took this picture. It's uh, of this native swamp rose. It climbs a lot. It's very thorny. It needs a wet area. It is a wild thing. So it needs all, um, I don't even know how well it's, you know, propagated or sold by native plant nurseries, but just know that it's out there <laughs> and, you know, it's making the wildlife happy out there. And it is also emitting some rosy fragrance to it as well. And you can find some, um, Information, just put in roses, UF, and see what comes up there. Now, as we're starting to wrap up, there are a few uh, plants out there that are going to lure you in because they smell fabulous, but they happen to be an invasive uh, plant an invasive non-native plant that the, the nature of invasive plants is there, there's no checks and balances for them here. And therefore they can tend to uh, spread and take over where native vegetation should be. Our wonderful camphor tree, there's lots of medicinal purposes for camphor and it might have that nice smell, you know, um, help you when you have a cold or are being attacked by allergies like me. Um, but it's an invasive, non-native plant. Chinaberry. There's chinaberries all over the place, just like there are camphor trees. But I only recently learned, maybe a year or two ago, due to a Facebook friend commenting that while she was out bike riding, she basically just had to stop and sit under this tree while she was being intoxicated by this fantastic smell that smelled like lilacs. So it brought her back to her childhood in the Midwest and she wanted to take pieces of that plant and find out how to propagate them. So having done some research, I learned there's this China berry. Yeah, you could take pieces and probably propagate it because that is the nature of 
invasive plants. They're very easy, easily propagated. But I think I got her talk down to this is not a good idea. This is not Florida friendly and you know could be harmful to the environment. So as wonderful as an, and intoxicated as she may be, because these plants, it's not their fault that humans displaced them, <laughs> but they're not the right plant in the right place. So yeah, they might have some wonderful attributes, but in the overall picture, we got to do what is right uh, for the environment. There's other fragrances out there, not just plants that you know can be part of your landscape. Mulch, this is pine mulch, any other kind of mulch. Um, soil, you know, dirt smells good. <laughs> A soil smells good. I'm so sorry. All the gardeners would uh, chastise me for that. They say dirt is in your fingernails or dirt is... Um, you know, something that gets dirty. Soil is what's in the ground. And we have fresh cut grass that is also a uh, lovely um, smell to your yard, or you can bring those tiki torches and scented oils to your yard. As we wrap up, um, one thing I have noticed is that people who have lived in Florida a long time and have left and then come back to visit. This is a couple of my own children as well as kids they grew up with and other people that I know. When they come back to visit, they will say, oh, smells like Florida. They're not saying it like, oh, smells like Florida. <laughs> um, they're just making the statement. So that kind of fascinated me. So I wanted to get people's opinions. What, because I don't smell it because I'm here all of the time. So what is it that you're smelling? What do you say this, this smells like Florida? So here's the uh, combination of ingredients that I have come up with that I would say is the smell of Florida. There's, there's a lot of rotting vegetation, <laughs> you know, here. So that moist woodsy kind of smell thrown in, you know, with salt, salt air. And then ozone, what we call the smell of rain. Hint of citrus, maybe not as much as there used to be, but it's coming back. So all those combinations, if you look at these pictures here, you know, it kind of brings you the whole smell of Florida. At least that is the conclusion that I have come to. Um, you might have some of your own ideas as to what, you know, the smell of Florida entails. Be nice. Um, natural Florida is what we're referring to. Here are some of my um, resources that I use to put this together. I mentioned the Florida Gardener's Book of Lists. Um, that was, you can probably find that on Amazon. Um, 50 Fragrant Plants for Florida Landscapes is a, a blog. There's more plants included in there herbs in the Florida garden. I definitely use the Florida Friendly Landscape Guide to Plant Selection and Design to get all of the zones and everything correct. And um, also found some things from the Florida Wildlife. Wow, well, no, that, that's not true. They're not the Florida Wildlife Foundation, it's the Florida Wildflower <laughs> Foundation. I'll need to fix that. And the Florida Native Plant Society. I have classes, um, continual classes. So next week I will be speaking in person at the Spring Hill Library at 10 a.m. on March 8th uh, about Florida friendly container gardening for ornamentals. Wednesday, March 15th at 10 a.m. This is another uh, suggestion and we asked people what we should talk about. So this is another thing I'm gonna have to research, moonlight gardens. And I bet a lot, some of these same plants are gonna show up again, the ones that have those wonderful aromas at night. And then Dr. Lester is gonna join me the next two Wednesdays for more practical things, <laughs> how to maintain your irrigation system and the what, when, where, and why of fertilizing Florida yards. That's not as exciting as these fun programs to me, but it are things that we have to talk about. 
we have an Earth Day celebration coming up. If anyone is nearby here in Hernando County on um, Saturday, April 22nd on Earth Day itself, it's a free event. It's at the Hernando County Master Gardener um, Nursery on Oliver Street in Brooksville. So uh, we will have kids tables. We will have a macro photography workshop, a native plant propagation workshop, and a pruning demonstration, as well as um, recycling expert will be on hand. Mosquito control will be there. Audubon, Hernando County Stormwater, and Hernando County Emergency Management. Master gardeners will be all over the place to answer your questions. And Dr. Lester and I will also be there. So everyone is welcome to that free event. And there again are my emails if you'd like to contact me. Um, Lily B, two L's in the middle, or you won't get me. I'm not a ginger Lily. I have two L's in the middle um, at hernandocounty.us or Hernando County FFL at hernandocounty.us. So um, I'm going to check the chat after I turn the recording off. But for those listening via recording, thank you and have a wonderful Florida friendly weekend.